coming up on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. We're going to talk about reasons why you might want to consider starting a garden, whether in your backyard or at a community garden, as well as organic products that you can use in your home that you may not know exist, as well as our good friend from Florida. He's a homeopathic practitioner. Robert Scott Bell will be with us, as well as your garden questions and our garden answers. It's our last show of the year, so tell your garden friends garden radio is on the air, because it all starts right now. You are tuned in to the only vegetable gardening radio show in Milwaukee, with your host, Joey Baird, who grew up in the country but now lives closer to the city, and Holly Baird, who has always been a city girl. Combined, they have over 25 years of gardening experience, who believe in simple gardening practices. A gardener for all gardeners, founders of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, where they created over 800 how-to garden videos to teach others how to grow more of what they eat. Join them for the next hour as they discuss vegetable gardening and more. It is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show on 860 AM WNOV and W293CX106.5, wherever you may be listening, however you may be listening. Whether through the, those particular stations, the TuneIn app, the Simple Radio app, the radio tab on the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com website, or anywhere in between, I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, gardening partner. Hi, Baird. Uh, we are live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The WisconsinVegetableGardener.com is your destination for over 1,100 garden video, short, long format, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, as as well as in-studio video, full length, and segments of this program, as well as podcast form in both uh, areas. This is our final show for the 2017 gardening season, and uh, we will talk more about coming what's coming up in 2018 in the uh, latter portions of this program. Uh, but first, we do want to mention again for the final time this year about voting for Blue Mills to be the official um, to, to, for the best garden center and best landscaping uh, categories in the Milwaukee A-List. So you can just simply go to bluemills.com, scroll down to the bottom of their page. There's a link there that you click. It'll bring you to the, the voting area. You do have to register, but you're not going to get spammed or anything like that. And um, you have until November 5th. And uh, last year, or when 2013, 14, and 16, they were voted Best Garden Center in Milwaukee, and uh, we hope that trend continues for 2017, and we've got more information on them at the bottom of the hour. Well, when it comes to gardening, many of you who are gardeners, you understand the importance of gardening um, and the importance of why you should garden. Uh, this program is made possible by all the sponsors you've heard throughout this, uh, with you hear throughout the hour and throughout this season, just like... Nasala Kombucha is the executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Nasala is made in Wisconsin with local tea and natural herbs. Look for it in the refrigerator aisle at your local grocery. If you don't see it, ask for it because if it's not Nasala Kombucha, it's not kombucha. Find it more at nasala.com. And if you would like to contact us uh, the very last time this year, you can certainly do that in a variety of ways. Uh, you can do that now. You can talk to us right now throughout the hour on the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline. IvyOrganic.com. It's a 3-in-1 plant guard. Naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents. Protects newly installed plants and trees. Shields pruned and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit IvyOrganics.com, and that's 414 414- Four 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 fifty two fifty. You can certainly do that. You can also email us anytime, twenty four seven at twvgradio at gmail dot com. You can also email us at twvgshow at gmail dot com. Uh, you can also tweet us if you're in the tweeting world at hashtag twvg or at TWVG show. So there's a number of ways in which you can contact. And if you forget all of that, you can just go to our website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, big red button on the right-hand side that says contact, and you can submit your question, suggestion, comment there. Well, uh, as we talked about, uh, the importance of gardening. Many of us grew up with gardening, whether it was on a large format, a uh, large area, or very small. Uh, and some of us who, some of you who are listening may have never gardened before may know people who don't garden for a variety of reasons as they gave you. Some of them may be legit and some of them may just be excuses that they are giving you. 
uh, why they don't garden, even if they have a very beautiful backyard that could be very productive. Uh, and we're going to go over a number of ways that uh, reasons why. Right. So first of all, um, a lot of people will garden because the freshness and the flavor and also the convenience. So maybe you don't want to grow a huge garden, but you want some fresh tomatoes for your nice uh, salad during the summer, some fresh lettuce or some nice herbs, then um, that is an option for you. Well, the the produce, the majority of produce that is purchased in the grocery stores travels an average of 1,500 miles from the field to your dinner table. And a lot of that is harvested prematurely. For example, tomatoes are harvested when they are not ripe. They are gassed with a gas in order to increase the ripeness, uh, the, the procedure of turning the fruit ripe. And, and it's not, and it's also not like, it's not like it just comes from, like, say, okay, let's say, like, California to here. It comes from California, then it sits in a warehouse somewhere, usually for a day or two, and then it gets put on the store shelves. So it's not, it's it's a process. It's going to take probably, it's not only 1,500 miles, but it's probably like a week. Right, and I, I've not looked at, I've not nailed down this statistic but I have read that three out of every five semi trucks you see on the road is hauling food somewhere, mm-hmm. uh, which we understand that the truckers have a tremendous impact on the economy. And if they stop, everything stops in this country. But three out of every five has some type of food product that they are delivering somewhere in the nation. Uh, and, you know, the, the freshness of it, you can't compare. No, and now, now we're taste. talking about store bought, non organic. We're talking about stuff that's shipped. If you're going to the farmers market today, or you go to a farmers market, that stuff has either picked, been picked this morning or late last night, right before dark, and it's sold today at the at the farmers market to you. So it's within 24 hours. It's been picked, and you've harvested, uh, and you've bought it, and you're probably using it within that next 24 hours or processing it to preserve it. Right. Very true. So it's it's definitely the freshness, the flavor. And uh, definitely the flavor, especially something like tomatoes. Nutrient value, too. Yeah, nutrients. As you harvest something, it immediately begins to decay, rot. It it begins to revert itself because it's no longer getting nutrients from the plant. It goes back into uh, the earth stage. It's it's decaying on itself in a very minute stage. And at a certain point, it goes very quickly. As some of us, if we've left fruit or vegetables on the counter, it seems like overnight at a certain point, it just goes to mush, slime, rot, mm-hmm. that type of thing. Right. So, so that's definitely one good reason. Um, you can save on your grocery bill. So this is obviously Even one farmer's of, market. Even going, farmer's yeah. market can save you on your grocery bill. But definitely um, both are very important. And you, you can. You don't have to. I... It's nice because during the summer, we're not buying any fruits or vegetables. And during the winter, since we do a lot of canning, there's a lot of things we're also not buying either. Right. And, uh, you know, if you are a new gardener, if this is your first year gardening, or you've listened to us going, I think I want to try to garden something next year, I will be the first to admit that you are going to have failures, but you have to learn from those. And and, and it, it, it's by and from our level of expertise, because I, I think we have a certain level of expertise, 25 plus years, and some of you have more than that, that if you have a question about, hey, I want to try to do this, how would you recommend it? Send us an email, because we have done the mistakes. We have made the mistakes. We've got the videos and to show how to do it. Even if we haven't, today. we know people who have. We know people who yeah. have, and we, we would, and not saying that we're perfect and we've made all the mistakes, we have plenty of room for mistakes in our future, but at least we are glad to help out. Uh, minimizing pesticides and the exposure of pesticides. If you're growing your own, you know what you're putting in the soil. Even if it's a non-organic uh, fertilizer, if it's an inorganic fertilizer and you're putting it in, you're knowing what ratios you're putting in, you're knowing what you're spraying on the crops. You're knowing what you're feeding your family, your kids, your grandkids, that type of thing. You, you know what's going on. When you go to a farmer's market, yes, you can talk to the farmer. If it's certified organic, there's levels that uh, that are safe, that they're not doing, that they're protecting, you know, making the food safe for you. Uh, if you go to the grocery store, you may not know what has been sprayed. If it's an inorganic, non-organic product, what may be or may not be in it. Uh, true enough, it's supposed to be safe for human consumption, but, but we, you don't know. We don't know. Um, gardening for exercise goes without saying. Um, 
Now, there are easier ways of gardening. Traditional ground gardening is probably one of the most startup difficult but most economical friendly to dig up area in the back, backyard, but there is a lot of work that goes into it. But you, if you have a job, like my, for my, myself, like for example, I essentially work in an office 40 hours a week. I have a, a, the option for to stand up or sit down, but um, I'm inside for those 40 hours a week, and it's nice to get outside, to be in that fresh air, to get my hands in the dirt, and it's it's uh, I think it's good not just for your physical health but your mental health as well. Right, and uh, we talked about for your health. Now we've read this before, and this was it's called the farm effect. It's from Central Texas Gardener uh, Linda. Uh, is the producer down there. We're good friends with her. It's in the Austin, Texas area. It's a weekly show, 39 weeks a year on PBS. And they had this uh, segment on, and I thought it was very uh, important uh, to share with all of you. Uh, as well, we've done this, we've shared this before, we'll share it again. And Holly's going to read what the farm effect is and explain it. Most of you devout Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener fans already know the amazing healing energy that can be found when your hands are in the dirt. Digging in the dirt is good for you and good for children also. The microbes in garden dirt can boost your immune system and make you healthier and happier. Unfortunately, we have become a nation of germaphobes, using hand sanitizers and wipes and strong chemicals for disinfecting our homes. In the past 20 years, there has been a dramatic increase in asthma and allergy rates. We see pharmacies popping up on every corner as a result. One in 12 children has asthma and even more have allergies. When we changed from an agrarian society in the late 20th century, allergies became more prevalent in the upper classes in the U.S. and Britain. Farmers and their families were the least likely to suffer from allergy issues. A recent study of, Amish, the, of an Amish community in the U.S. found that they had the lowest rates of allergies in the developed nations. The study found that these Amish families, including pregnant women and children, worked and played among the farm animals and in the barns were re- regularly exposed to a variety of microbes. Women exposed to the microbes while pregnant have been found to have children with the lowest rate of allergies. The initial exposure causes the children less reaction to pollen and dander, a sort of vaccination effect was named the farm effect. The problem is not that the pollen is out there, it's that we react to the pollen and early exposure to the allergens allow children's immune systems to adapt to their environment. A a common soil mycobacterium was found to have a natural antidepressant effect on the brain. It can actually have the same effect that the drug Prozac has on the brain which without all the side effects. Working in the soil can help stimulate serotonin production, which leads to feeling more relaxed and happy. When we harvest food and the brain produces more dopamine, there's actually a harvest high that is probably linked to our primitive brain when hunting and gathering successfully was crucial to survival. Having your hands in the soil can lower blood pressure and stress hormones and improve memory. Inflammatory skin conditions like psoriasis and gut conditions like Crohn's disease and even arthritis can be improved by experiencing soil microbes. Gardeners get a lot of vitamin D from being outside, which also increases the good hormone serotonin and helps to regulate melatonin levels, which can also lead to good sleep. Children who play outside more regularly tend to be more adventurous, confident, and self-motivated to use their imaginations more. So get the kids involved in gardening as early as possible. Provide them with a window box or container garden that doesn't have to take up space. You might even notice that they will eat a wider variety of fruits and vegetables when they have experience of growing and harvesting food and let the kids get dirty. Splashing in puddles and making mud pie is not only fun for kids, it's actually good for them. And if you're feeling a little blue, a little garden green might be your best cure. Courtesy of Central Texas Gardener, Linda down there, the producer, provided that for us. And there's a lot of sense to that. And, and the, the, you know, there's scientific studies that's backing those uh, claims in that. And I have, I have to agree. I know a lot of people nowadays don't want their kids to get dirty. They don't want them. Is it playing. not because they don't want to get dirty? Is it because I have to clean it and clean the kids up, and they are going to drag it in the house and get the house dirty? I I don't know. Okay, but either way, either way, dirt is not the worst thing for your children. So definitely, um, I I would have to agree. I think I think uh, that there's not just even that science behind it, but the fact that going onto the garden can be good for all of us. Yes, and the last thing we want to mention on this, and you can use these to entice your non-garden friends to garden a little bit, or to, to garden, to try gardening, is the social aspect of it. Uh, to, whether it's a community garden, uh, you're going to interact with other members of that community garden. There's a lot of community gardens around the Milwaukee area and around the country uh, that you can participate in for a very low fee and get a lot of return for that that investment 
And that's like having uh, gardeners on hand 24-7. Whenever you go there, there's experienced gardeners that have gardened there for many, many years that you can say, hey, I've got this problem. Can you come over and take a look? Or how can I do? Or how can I per make this happen? And they will help you. And you can learn, uh, just be interactive with them. I remember uh, a story, and this is on a, a larger scheme of, of agricultural uh, social aspect. My grandfather, 83 years old, he remembers back when the horse and uh, horses were used to plow the fields. And at, at a certain point, you would take a break. You'd take the horses up underneath the shade tree and give them a water and, and let them take a little break. Well, the neighbor would do the same thing, so they would talk at the ends of the, of the field where, on the cor back in, back years ago, the corners were marked with what they're called cornerstones. They were giant rocks that marked the property lines of fields. So back then they had that social interaction that even a few minutes, hey, how's it going, what's going on, that type of thing. Now we've gotten the modernization, tractors, combines, um, technology where you don't talk to anybody. And that's the same thing with social media. Uh, we are friends on social media, but we really aren't friends because it's just an image on a screen and you type a few words to somebody and you never, ever meet them. So you, we've lost in society that connection, that human connection that we once had, but thanks to technology, we have lost that. Right. Well, when we come back, we're going to go over some homemade and some store-bought organic products that you may not be buying that you should be right after this. Have a gardening question? Email Joey and Holly at twvgradio at gmail.com. Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at migardener.com. With over 300 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom and organic, flower, vegetable and herb seeds available year-round, pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to migardener.com for seeds and gardening needs, tools, and special blend fertilizer. migardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. Bobex is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. Bobex deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. Bobex can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more, visit bobex.com. B-O-B-B-E-X dot C-O-M. I have a growing family, and I try to make healthy meals. And one thing I really love about Woodman's is that they have a huge selection of fresh fruits and vegetables. And the quality is really good, too. They even carry locally grown produce. And they keep the prices low, so I can stay within my budget and put a healthy meal on the table. I'm Cameron, and this is my Woodman's. I want a garden center that listens to and understands my needs. I want to buy my gardening products from a local business with strong ties to the community. All I want is a garden center that truly values their customers. It seems like everyone is selling plants these days, but I'm having a hard time finding quality. I take pride in my garden, so I want my garden center to take pride in their products. Where will you be going for all of your gardening needs this season? Blue Mel's Garden Center. We are your answer. Blue Mel's 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Barrett. Hello, Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show, 860 AM uh, WNLV and W293CX 106.5. So happy you've joined us here for our final show of the 2017 Season 1 of the program. And we're so happy that we've had great sponsors throughout the year, just like... If you like produce, fresh produce delivered right to your neighborhood, you should check out Tree Rice Citrus Company. You can find out where to pick up top quality produce from tree-ripe.com. They have, well, they're all out of their peaches and blueberries at this point, but they will have nice, delicious citrus in the 
December, January. December, January. Yeah, about around the first of the year. Um, it comes right to a stop in your neighborhood, fresh off the truck, right from the source. For location and schedules, you can visit tree-ripe.com. They have locations all over, including Iowa, Upper and Lower Michigan, Minnesota, Illinois, and right here in Wisconsin. Tree-ripe.com is your go-to for the freshest produce around. You know, people hear that on the podcast replay in studio view from other parts of the country and like, why can't we get tree ripe in our area? Well, it's a specific regional deal uh, right. for tree ripe, uh, but you're missing out. Let's just put it that way. There's a reason to move to Wisconsin. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And it's not, yeah, there you go. So let's talk about organic products. We'll finish up with this. This is our last segment of the show. we got Robert Scott Bell coming on in, in moments away, and then, then our final thoughts. Uh, organic products, w- we look at society, and there's a lot of chemicals. We just talked Unless about Unless you wanted to talk about uh, sailboat trailers. Well, maybe we'll have time for that <laughs> later. Um, there's a lot of chemicals we encounter every day in society. And there are organic products. The, 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 the mindset for a lot of people is I'm not buying organic because it's too expensive. Right. Or what's, what's the point? What's the point? Now, we're not talking specifically about organic tomatoes and peppers. We're talking about uh, and the, the genre of organic title in, 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 in its entirety. What organic products that we can buy or make save money and actually be more beneficial for us in our home? Well, for one, um, it can uh, non-organic products could have an, uh, an adverse effect on your health. Some people feel that it's it's not good for you, and it's been proven that even if you're not consuming it, if you're putting those products on your body, it can absorb into your bloodstream still. Okay. Um, well, so you, and you talked about making your homemade homemade products. How, how do you do that? Sure. So many people, or even if you don't want to make your own homemade beauty products like lotions or toothpaste, one thing you have to consider, especially with toothpaste, is you are putting that on your, your gums and your teeth, and that is soaking into your bloodstream pretty directly. Mm-hmm. So that's something to definitely consider. Um, things like lotions, uh, face, putting things on your face, all of that is going to... Any actually, skin contact. Any is skin gonna, contact yeah. is, is an exposure as well. Um, some people would even go as far to say, like, things for your hair also. Okay. Um, but that's really up to you. I know, like, some people make their own toothpaste. I... Personally, as we had learned um, earlier in this the season about the benefits of grapeseed oil on the skin, so I've done that as well. Um, so that's something to kind of keep in mind is thinking about not only what you're consuming and like digesting, but also putting on your skin and um, on your teeth. Okay, so let's talk about cleaners. Now you can make your homemade cleaners. You can make your with with products that you have that are relatively safer than what you would buy at the store. You can also buy, well, we'll talk about um, uh, Rebel Green. Yeah, so Rebel Green is one. There's many different now Explain what Rebel Green is. Rebel Green the... is um, organic home cleaning products that are the companies based out of Mequon. So it's a local local company as well. Um, but even, you know, whatever you could find. The thing is, is that a lot of these non-organic products or chemical products, what they're doing is you might not think about where they go once you rinse them down the drain, but then they're going to the drain, they're going into the sewer system, into the groundwater, and that's not good. Same thing when you're pouring pills down the toilet. They've got to be, they're going somewhere, and then they're adding chemicals to, to treat that, what's in that water to make it safe for you to drink again. Right, and you might think, okay, well, I really don't care about the earth, whatever, the earth will be fine. And that's true, the earth will be fine. But your children and your grandchildren your grandchildren's grandchildren will not be fine. So that's something to consider about thinking about the longevity of life and how that we have almost 8 billion people on this planet and how we have to keep that in mind. Well, let's talk about making something that is good for us, which is vinegar. We've talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Briefly, can we go over what the process is and and how you make it? Right. So it's a fermentation process. So we use, um, we have a pear tree, so we use pear scraps. And same thing with apples. You can use apples and you can use pineapple scraps as well. Those are the only three options you have. Right. For, for raw vinegar. Right. Okay. Um, so you use the scraps, and then you start with the process of putting them in a jar or a container. It has to be glass or clay or something like that. It can't just be like a plastic container. It doesn't have to necessarily be a canning jar or mason jar, but it does have to be something that's going to hold it. Um, and then you put the water, some sugar. You can use raw vinegar from a previous batch or that you have from the store. And then you let it ferment for about a week like that. Then you would strain off the water, and then you let that sit. 
But you want to make sure it's covered. You want to keep stirring it and so that doesn't have mold crate. You stir it once or twice a day. But it does take a process of anywhere from a month to two months, but then you have your own raw vinegar. And that's a way, and that's good for uh, your, your gut bi- uh, probiotic? Yeah, it's it, a good probiotic. It's good for your... Now, we're not talking about drinking it like you would water. No. Uh, we're talking about, and, and the recommendations you can find online is about a teaspoon a night. No, it's a, a tablespoon, tablespoon, about a tablespoon a day. A day. Mm-hmm. And, and so however you can get that down. Um, some people will put... like You, you just, mix it in with your smoothie. Yeah, I mix it in with my smoothie, but... Um, a lot of people will just put a little bit in their water throughout the day. I'm That does not appeal to me, but maybe that is something that you want to do. Some people just take a shot of it and move on with their life. Um, also, we, we've talked about this on the program, the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen. Uh, these are fruits and vegetables that are more susceptible to absorbing of toxicities that sprayed in the, in the agricultural fields versus others that don't. Uh, what's the criteria on, on that? Um, so, basically, if you think about it, if you're not sure, you can you, you can always look up the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen. But if it's a soft-bodied fruit or vegetable, it's going to have more pesticide uh, exposure. Absor- absorption Absorbed. capabilities. So, if you think about, like, a strawberry versus a pineapple strawberry, you were eating that strawberry, the whole thing. A pineapple has that rind or peel or whatever you want to call it. To, to outer kind of skin. Outer skin to kind of protect itself from the pesticide. So think about that. So think about leafy greens, uh, berries, um, even like peaches, nectarines, apricots. All of those are going to absorb more of that pesticide. So when you see something of that nature in the the store, you want to look. That would be the the opportunity where you look for the organic versus the non-organic. Not even if it's a few cents more type of thing, because of the levels of toxicity that could be absorbed in the non-organic vegetables and fruits compared to the organic variety, it's well worth a little bit more to know that you're not con- ingesting what could be a variety of different levels of, of bad chemicals for, in your body. Right. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. There's actually the study done in, I believe it was Switzerland, where a family had all of their... Um, tr- uh, organic or conventional foods removed from their house. Their urine was tested before they did this study, and then after they removed all of these these uh, pesticide laden foods, essentially for a week. Then they tested the urine, urine again, and there was no pe- no trace of pesticides. A very very negligible trace. No, we're not talking. We Holly and I are not 100% vegan or vegetarian or chemical free. Let's make that perfectly clear. We're not vegan or vegetarian at all. Or, I know, but or and but we're not pesticide. No, we we do eat things that have pesticides. Or, and we go to the fast food restaurant and get our favorite French yeah. fries. Yeah, that type of yeah. thing. Yeah, we're not perfect, cer- <laughs> certainly by any means, but we definitely are aware of it, and we try to live a as healthy more but conscious more awareness. conscious yeah we're mindful of what we are doing uh, another one you can do that is an organic based is make your own bug spray uh, in your garden yeah there's many different recipes I guess you could say formulas. online formulas there you go online anything from soapy water or um, soapy water with some rubbing alcohol in it to get rid of certain pests um, things like using the neem oil so definitely something to consider that can be quite effective without having to use a lot of those chemicals. Right. And you can even clean your home efficiently with a lot of vinegar, um, baking soda, any any kind of stuff that would eliminate a lot of those chemicals as right. well. So with that being said, maybe that will open, uh, open some options up for you that you weren't aware that they were there beforehand. Another thing you can do is uh, look at options in getting your grass cut for next year, and you can do that with Aaron's. Do you hear that? That's your neighbor shaking in their grass-stained shoes because Aaron's is about to help you step up your grass-cutting game. Uh, your name is on the mailbox, so that Aaron's name should be on your mower. Heavy-duty steel construction, smarter, smoother controls, professional cutting performance. The only thing we love more than the smell of freshly cut grass is the sweet taste of victory. Aaron's, it comes down to this. 
Visit Aaron's for your to find your local lawn and snow removal equipment. And snow removal equipment, I'm sure, is just right around the corner. Uh, probably just a few weeks. Well, when we come back, an interview that I've been waiting for for some time. We've interviewed him on other uh, social media aspects of our production. Uh, he's a homeopathic practitioner from Florida. He's also a no- national syndicated radio host on GCN and Natural News Network. Uh, Robert Scott Bell will be with us to uh, answer a bunch of our questions about how to do things more natural to cure and heal our body right after this. Tweet Joey and Holly using hashtag TWVG. Oh, yeah. What you say? You say Nasala Kombucha. It'll put some glide in your stride and some pep in your step. Nasala Kombucha. <laughs> Yeah. makes your body happy. makes your body smile. Hot Show Note, 125 years of experience producing stone, ground, organic flour, and cornmeal made from premium quality whole grains. Family owned company, continual standards that are non GMO, organic at the highest safety levels. Offering a wide variety of flours, pasta, baking mixes, flaxseed, and more. Even kosher and gluten-free options. Found at most local grocers, like Woodman's. For more information and recipes, visit HodgsonMill.com. That's H-O-D-G-S-O-N-M-I-L-L.com. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Do you have a little space to grow? Check out Greenstock Vertical Gardens at GreenstockGarden.com. Greenstock is engineered to grow with its innovative space and water-saving design. You can grow vegetables, flowers, herbs, and even strawberries in just two square feet of space. Grow up instead of out. Perfect for the porch, patio, or deck. Grow up to 30 plants in a small space. GreenstockGarden.com has everything you need to grow in the littlest of spaces. Proudly made in the USA. For more information and to purchase, visit GreenstockGarden.com. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Kelly Berry. The Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. So happy you've joined us on this Saturday morning. Talk a little bit of gardening for the last time uh, for us this year. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com, your destination, containing eleven hundred plus garden videos, short, long format, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that and more, and the ways to contact us. As well as you've got a little more time before uh, Blue Mel, uh, the official garden center of the, West, uh, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, Blue Mel's Landscape and Garden Center closes for the season. Right, so they're going to close uh, for the for the season, um, but they will have the coffee center open. They're open to all, all year round. The coffee shop is on the mm-hmm. premises there, and uh, Blue Mel- November fifth is whenever uh, Blue Mel's will be closing their garden center. But that doesn't mean you cannot still get a hold of them for your landscape consultations. Uh, your uh, they'll they'll mow your grass next year. Um, they can get that uh, checked out as well as. Um, other are they closing on set? Okay, November fourth. November fourth. So okay. As of November fifth, they'll be closed. Okay. Um, but they have the coffee shop there um, if you want to stop by, and then I'm sure they'll open again probably in March or February. Uh, or oh no, uh, mid-April. Mid-April, mid-April is, is uh, tentatively. But yeah, the official garden center. Where where can we find the coffee shop as well as the garden center, Holly? You can find that um, them at 4930 West Loomis Road in Greenfield. So that's just south of Layton on Loomis. You can go to bluemills.com or call 414. 414- Two eight two forty two twenty. So, so happy that they've been part of this program. They were very excited to jump on board, and we're we're very happy to have them. So, Holly, let's go to the Ivy Organics three in one plant guard hotline and bring in our next guest. 
Robert hosts the fastest two hours of healing information on the radio, dealing with everyday health issues from the perspective of alternative holistic health care. Robert Scott Bell tackles the tough issues and shows no fear when confronting government and corporate bullies who would stand in the way of health freedom. You will be amazed by the amount of information about healing that is kept secret from you and what you can do to learn more about it. Robert Scott Bell is a homeopathic practitioner with a passion for health and healing unmatched by anybody on the radio. Welcome to the program. Hey, good to be back with you guys. It's been a while. Yes, uh, we appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us, uh, Holly, myself, and all of our listeners, to share some of your health freedom uh, information with all of us. Yeah, I, and, and, you know, I'm getting out in the garden. It's time to plant for the winter here. So uh, I don't know how you guys shut down all, all uh, winter long, but uh, come on down and visit. <laughs> yeah, he's, he, Robert's in Florida for those who are trying to figure out where he's planting right now. Uh, you you overcame uh, numerous chronic diseases uh, by using natural healing practices, what were those diseases that you overcame, and how did you overcome these diseases? If you can <coughs> share that story with all of our listeners. Sure. I was the poster boy for every allergy known to man much of my first, well, 24 years of life, uh, and I had suffered uh, gastrointestinal distress, even hospitalized for it. I had respiratory ailments, diseases. I had musculoskeletal inflammatory conditions met with non-steroidal and steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. I was pharmaceutically grown, and so uh, the answer to prayers came when I was 24, even though I was praying through my teen years for healing, uh, when I met a homeopathic doctor who immigrated from Belgium to America, and he started growing organically. He was actually featured on, the, uh, I think, the PBS Victory Garden show years and years ago, uh, and it switched my diet from the standard American diet to that which was grown without pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, etc. So the first thing I had to do was stop putting the poison in my body, and then encourage the uh, recovery of my excretory organs, particularly my liver, kidney, spleen, colon, lymph, all of that. And I used homeopathics, I used herbs, uh, I used minerals, different things like that, hydrated more properly, etc. And uh, within two years, I had undone the previous 24 years of ailments and illnesses. So um, with that being said, a couple of years ago... Uh, yeah, a couple of years ago, yeah. the Zika virus is all over the news, and now it's unheard of. What happened to that, and why is it not an issue anymore? Well, anytime you hear a virus is the cause of disease, uh, I want you to think the reality is that they're covering up some kind of multinational corporation poisoning and polluting the environment locally and giving rise to viral activity due to uh, particularly selenium deficiency, but nutrient deficiencies. So the reality is there were... Uh, dumping of larvicides in the water for about a year prior to the manifestation of the microcephaly, which was the birth defect in these children. And they blamed this virus because they didn't want to take responsibility for the polluting of the water by, you know, corporate-created toxins. Uh, but the reality is the larvicide had a known side effect, and that included the microcephaly birth defect. Now, there's just as much Zika present today as there was when this outbreak was happening, but the reality is they found in only one out of every nine cases of the, of the uh, uh, so-called microcephaly birth defect was there any evidence of the presence of the Zika virus, which if you're uh, a detective and only one out of nine cases you find the Zika, you have to go back to the drawing board and figure out what could be the cause because in fully eight out of every nine cases there's no Zika present so it can't possibly be the cause. Now, the reality is we know that viral activity in a body that is deficient in selenium can run roughshod, and it could be any virus. Otherwise, the history of Zika found, found I believe, in 1947 was that it basically did hardly anything at all. If, it, if you got a sniffle when you encountered it, that was big news. So it's another scam to prevent you from knowing that nutritional deficiencies and Toxin exposure is the real cause of disease because they want to promote an agenda of vaccination, a multi-billion dollar approach that has no liability once it gets on the schedule here in the United States. Well, let's talk about the vaccination. It, it's an extremely hot topic now on your show and the news because people are, children, parents are not wanting to get their children vaccinated for certain uh, diseases. You often hear about this controversial topic. Why does it seem like the government wants to get vaccinate our children more now than ever? When I grew up, we had, I was vaccinated, but not to the level that children are today. What's going on? Yeah, we had four or five shots when we were kids, and now it's uh, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. 
And uh, what has happened is that these uh, the multinational corporations, in particular the pharmaceutical industry, they have captured the regulatory agencies, FDA, and they've captured the CDC. The CDC has become the main promoter and distributor and profiteer, if you will, for vaccinations. And so in violation of our First Amendment, our government has basically sanctioned a state religion. That religion is now the Church of Pharmaceutical Mysticism, and the sacrament in that church is vaccination. Put your altar on that, uh, put your child on that altar and sacrifice them with these needles. Now, antibodies are fine to have, but they are not the uh, definitive uh, holy grail of immunology. In fact, you can have an antibody for any given disease, and you can suffer from it. The reality is the vaccines hamstring or damage and weaken your immune system, even if they artificially induce an antibody response. Uh, so my children are not vaccinated, and uh, a doctor will take his or her life into their own hands if they attempted to vaccinate my children. I know better. Uh, but, uh, you know, I have different ways to strengthen immunity. We understand the microbiome, much like the microbiome of the soil. It's important for the immune system of all of us. And the utilization of minerals and, in fact, other things like silver hydrosol or um, different immunomodulators that are available to us from the natural world. Definitely. Now, me and many of my friends deal with PCOS. It's polycystic ovarian syndrome. It affects 1 in 10 women. Not a lot of people are aware of it, but if you have it, you, you know. Is there anything in the homeopathic world that can help relieve many of the symptoms? Yeah, um, primary is actually not directing the action toward the female system. That is uh, the uh, aberration there is the end result of toxins. So we have environmental toxins coming in through food, water, and air, and, of course, the plasticizers, uh, the uh, endocrine disruptors from pesticides as well. So unless uh, people are willing to go organic, clean up what's going into their body, everything we do to, attra- to address directly the, the ovarian uh, dysfunction uh, will be limited in its benefit. Now, that doesn't mean we can't direct homeopathic formulas and complexes for female-specific uh, issues, and, and I have, but it's always in combination with detoxification of the liver and the kidneys, also the support of the restoration of the assimilation capacity of the body through the digestive tract, right? We've got to heal the microbiome, heal the lining of the gut, which is what I've developed a technique, which took me two years to recover my own GI function, and I can do in two months or less and this is true for women as well, dealing with uh, mal, what we call malabsorption issues, vitamins, minerals, trace minerals, the essential fats, all of these things that normalize endocrine function and production of endocrine compounds have to be corrected in the gut. Uh, so we can utilize herbs as well. There are many that can be helpful, but my emphasis is on cleaning the body and giving the body what it needs, and the healing of the body is done via the innate intelligence, the God-granted intelligence of our body. Okay. A good advice there. Now, Joey found relief using a nebulizer and a quality of silver <clears throat> with a terrible cough that he had last winter that we mm-hmm. had learned actually from one of your videos. Explain to listeners how beneficial silver is to the body. Yeah, on the expanded edition of Unlock the Power to Heal, the book I wrote with Ty Bollinger, I included on page 101, one of the most important chapters, and that goes to pulmonary health, lung health. So many people, even if they overcame uh, a temporary infection, uh, whether it be a cold or a flu, whether they used drugs or not, they often had a lingering cough or development of a a rattling mucusy sound in the lungs that could develop into uh, uh, an asthma bronchitis or even a pneumonia. And so I uh, produced, in addition to the book, that video that you saw of how to nebulize the bioactive form of silver hydrosol, which is a more active and, and safer form of colloidal silver. And by delivering the ions via nebulizing directly into the lungs, we can neutralize either viral, bacterial, or even fungal components that cause inflammation and uh, difficulty with breathing. And this is so critically important because we can bypass all of the drugs that are used and directly inhibit the ability of a virus to replicate, a bacteria or fungus to reproduce. And in, the, in, that, in this case, I've seen cases of pneumonia that a year's worth of drugs could not touch and in 24 hours or less, we can remediate that via nebulizing the colloidal silver. The ions directly interfere with the bacterial ability to reproduce, and it downregulates tissue inflammation locally and simultaneously upregulates regeneration of healthy new tissue. Once again, 
The liver of the kidneys are key here because the reason the lungs end up being a dumping ground for the fluid and the mucus is because the other excretory pathways have been compromised due to overwhelming amounts of toxins and or deficiencies, for instance, of selenium, which prevents the production of glutathione. Glutathione is the master antioxidant and the key to detoxify every cell in the body, including the liver and including the lungs. And that's in addition to the silver. That's why a lot of people will say when you're sick, uh, drink green tea, organic green tea, because it's a natural herb that helps cleanse the body. Am I correct on, on that terminology there? <clears throat> Yes, that's correct. And, and again, I, I cannot overstate the importance of selenium deficiency that plays a role here in these adaptations for survival as the body excretes the garbage that can't come out through the liver and kidneys as efficiently as designed by God and it gets dumped into the lungs. This is not bad luck. This is liver congestion primarily. So we've got to heal and get the excretory system moving again. And in this way, we can prevent these lung maladies from ever occurring and if it does happen, we can, in conjunction with that, utilize the colloidal silver or silver hydrosol in a nebulizer to, re to, to never have to resort to the antibiotics that destroy the gut and damage and weaken excretory function in the future. Well, Robert, we greatly appreciate you taking time. There's so much knowledge here that we just don't have hours enough to talk about. Where can people find more about you, find that book you and Ty Bollinger uh, wrote on the silver, uh, and uh, contact you uh, on a weekly basis? Yeah, the best way is to go to my website, robertscottbell.com. We now do YouTube simulcasts of almost every show, so you can watch it live on the air or download it later. But robertscottbell.com, the book is called Unlock the Power to Heal. Robert, thank you very much for spending time with us on this Saturday morning and uh, unveiling your homeopathic practitioning expertise with Holly, myself, and all of our listeners. Glad to be with you. you. You guys keep up the great work. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And when we come back, your garden questions and our final thoughts on our last segment for the year right after this. Have a gardening question? You can call into the ivorganic.com hotline at 414-444-5250 right now. Beans and Barley Marketing Cafe and Neighborhood Specialty Grocery Store for the east side of the greater Milwaukee area where you can find all you need from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners from wine to fresh fruits, carrot juice and health food stores hundreds of products vitamin supplements bath and body items magazines cars, books and a knowledgeable staff catering available open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good healthy homemade food including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties 1901 East North Avenue Milwaukee 414-278-787 and online at beansandbarley.com. Mycorrhizae is a beneficial fungus from plantsuccess.com that will greatly increase your plant's germination, ability, and a healthier root structure. You can increase seed sprouting, root growth, and general plant germination. Mycorrhizae can be used with hydroponics, root cutting, seed sprouting, coca core, and soil. Plantsuccess.com carries powder, granule, and tablet forms of mycorrhizae. Increase the level of mycorrhizae in your soil for your plants to give them the optimal opportunity to produce an incredible harvest. For more information and to purchase, visit plantsuccess.com. The River West Co-op Grocery and Cafe is proud to support the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener and a lot of other Wisconsin growers as well. The Co-op offers a wide range of local and organic produce in their store and on their cafe menu, from apples to yogurt and everything in between. Open 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. weekdays, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. weekends at the corner of Clark and Frackney in Milwaukee's River West neighborhood. See what is in store and check out the Co-op Cafe delicious vegetarian menu at riverwestcoop.org. Hi, I'm John Lewandowski, retail manager of Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center. Now, I'm not going to tell you about our awesome dome-grown plants, our beautiful pottery, or our 40 varieties of landscape materials. What I am going to tell you is that Blue Mel's is a local, independent, family-owned garden center that truly cares about your garden or landscape project. So if you're looking for that one garden center that actually cares about you, Come to Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center. We've been treating our customers like family since 1955. Blue Mel's 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. Well, the show has been pretty strong. But it can always be stronger. I just don't know how to make it that way. I got it. We're going to add more cowbell. Cowbell's always the answer. It's the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. 
radio show on 860 AM WNOV and W293CX 106.5. So happy you've joined us. Uh, we're going to go right to the IV Organics 3 one Plant Guard Hotline and bring in, uh, we've got a caller. Caller, you're on the air. So it's so informative, and every day I'm working on eating better, and my question is about your suggestion on water, okay. distilled, or ovination, filtration, that kind of stuff. You don't, you don't have to buy water. You can get a filter pitcher or attach one of those, pi- those filters to your faucet, and that is perfectly good for what you need. Now, the, good question, because a lot of cities, and I believe Milwaukee's one of them, they add chlorine to the water to, to kill the bacteria in it. Now, chlorine, chlorine is a known, uh, it's not healthy for the human body. It actually can dehydrate the, uh, dehydrational problems in the body, and some cities have eliminated it totally from their system. But yeah, filtration system. Holly, we use a filtration system. We just use a filter pitcher, or you can just get one of those ones that attach to your faucet directly, um, and you can buy those at any big box store. Thank you. I look forward to you next year. Thank you Thank very you. much. Uh, another way that you can uh, get rid of the chlorine is just let the fill a pitcher of water up and let it sit there for 24 hours, and then that chlorine will evaporate, and that's actually better to drink without the gas of that chlorine in right. it. So we do have a couple of questions. If you have another, if you have a question, you can call in the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard hotline. Ivy Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields pruned and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees. Ornamental trees and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com. You can call in to 414-444-5250. So we'll get to the two questions and then uh, our final thoughts on the year. Uh, question number one. I have found some seed potatoes when I was putting the garden to bed. My question is, should I leave them or put them away for next year? Uh, now, this was an open-ended question. Uh, if, they, if you found them... And if you dug them up, and uh, you can just leave them in the ground, they're going to go to a dormancy state, and you'll get a, a volunteer potato next year. If you found like a bag of them in the in the storage room, uh, you don't really want to plant them because they will probably rot. Uh, it's better just to buy new seed potatoes next year, and or buy organic seed potatoes from the organic grocery store and plant those. Uh, it's simply just there are ways of doing it to overwinter or preserve your seed potatoes so you can have them for next year, but it's best to buy fresh and new. Definitely. Um, so this person said... Well, this was a comment on the wintering. Winterizing winter- your home for winter. Great we- tips. I change our furnace filter once every three months. We have a house full of pets, so our filters get filled with fur bunnies as well as dust, dirt, etc. So uh, that was a, we did that episode. We did that segment a couple of weeks ago on the program. Uh, number th- uh, Diane asked, is straw bells used... Uh, can you use straw bells year after year, or after the first year, do I need to get rid of that bell and get a new one every year? No, you can use them for two years, uh, possibly three, but two is typically about it. Now, once you um, you get the straw bell ready, you don't have to do that process the second year. It's going to be ready to grow in. If the straw bell looks like an elephant stomped on it, then you probably want to let it go at that point. Um, you just kind of have to determine that yourself, but you can definitely do it for two years. So, yeah, there you go. And uh, Joe Lampo, host of Growing a Greener World uh, on PBS, he commented again on, on one of the in-studio videos in regards to... Uh, so he said, so glad you featured Gary from AmpleHarvest.org. Such a great organization and an important message. Gardeners do waste a lot of their bounty from a productive garden. This is a great way to make the most out of the excess. Thank you for sharing the message on your show and video. And as always, we always appreciate when Joe stops and leaves us a nice comment. Yeah, a lot of stuff going on in his world, but he takes time to to jump into ours a little bit. So with that being said, final thoughts for the year. We've had 35 shows. We've had 34 guests. We've covered 66 topics, uh, dozens of questions, call-in questions, and hundreds of questions via social media that we've tackled and you can find all of the episodes and all the segments on the radio tab on our website, as well as the highlight tab on the right-hand side. That should be all updated with everything that we've done this year in the next two weeks. There's a lot to be put on the website. There's a lot of topics to, to – I've been focusing on the sponsorship aspect of the show rather than getting everything up to date every moment that it is ready for on the website. Uh, a couple of things we need to uh, thank. First of all, we want to thank God because uh, we believe that prayer is – does work, 
and uh, you have to have faith and uh, there was a lot of faith put into this program, a lot of, you know, if this is not supposed to happen, we're not going to do it type of thing. And a lot of you people are, you know, some of you may think, well, why is that important? Why, why, do you, why does he care about a radio show? Uh, I'm not going to get into scripture, but there's a scripture that says, you have not because you ask not of the Father. He'll grant you if he finds it appropriate to, to bless you with things. And we've been blessed with this show and been blessed to come to you each week in order to uh, share our knowledge with you and your garden as well as we want to thank the sponsors. You've heard throughout the, the year, Nestala Kabucha, Ivy Organics, RootMaker.com, Tree Ripe, Bob X, Green, Gar- uh, Greenstock Vertical Garden, Plant Success, Beans and Barley, MI Gardener, Aaron's, uh, Re- Really Granola, Woodman's uh, Grocery Store, Mantis Plant Protection, Art of the Garden, River West Co-op, Root Assassin Shovels, Hotchins Mills, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. Some of them are coming back. Others have chose to go other directions with their marketing dollars. But we are fully funded for next year uh, with a, with a va- vast variety of different uh, companies that are, in, uh, that are backing us, that believe in us, that uh, we've never worked with before, but are very, very excited to be part of this show next year, not only to, to bring their product into your world, but allow us to show you their product and talk about it uh, when uh, applicable on the air. Uh, we also want to thank WNOV uh, because without them, we're not here. Yeah, we definitely appreciate um, uh, Homer, Homer, and the whole the whole station, and right. and uh, all of their um, their friendliness and just um, accepting us onto the station. Yeah, Homer has been a, a, a big part of this. Uh, Keon has run the board. Debo is the main engineer that runs most of our shows here, and uh, we appreciate them taking time and, and being part of this. Uh, Mary, uh, and we 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 uh, appreciate everybody who's been part of this program, uh, been associated with this program, uh, that uh, we've been able and fortunate enough to be part of uh, the family here at WNOV, and those who have been receptive enough to tune us in each week uh, to listen to us. And of course, we want to thank our close friends and family who have been supportive to us as well throughout this oh, entire journey. Well, yeah, and and you know we've had all of our guests. We want to thank. Oh but, yeah, of course. Uh, we have reached out prior to the show to, to Mike Novak, Joe Lampo, uh, Nikki, Nikki, Jabor. Nikki Jabor, Doug Oster. Physically had conversations, video and phone call. They they are radio hosts themselves. Uh, in in different parts of the country and said, hey, here's what we're going to do. What advice can you offer us that we may not know? that's behind the scenes and they were very uh, uh, gracious with their time multiple times to speak with us in regards to uh, how how this runs because Holly and I have no educational background in radio broadcasting nothing no no videography we history we don't really have an educational background in most of the stuff we do but we get it done and we get it figured out and I think that's what's important um, but I also want to of course and I think you mentioned this I of course want to thank our listeners yes. um because without you, obviously, we wouldn't have the show. And all of you who call in or send in the questions or the emails or even my my workmates or uh, people on the street, whoever sees me asking me a gardening question when they see my garden shirt and tell me about their overwintered pepper plants, we appreciate all of you. So, yeah, that's and, and next year uh, we, we're going to do 35 shows. We got confirmation Thursday night from WNOV that our show will be 9 to 10 a.m. Uh, starting March 3rd through October 27th. 35 weeks uh, next year so we're we're happy that the time slot will stay the same so you, nothing changes there and uh, you know with all this it's going to be a, it's going to be the same hour show but there's going to be a lot more let's say bells and whistles to make the listening experience more enjoyable for you uh, I've spent 35 weeks this year keeping notes and a clipboard of things that it's going to be fun and it's going to you know just like everything that Joey and I do we always try to Improve, and so we're we're going to improve with you in mind as well. Yes, so. uh, because your the your importance uh, is the reason why we're here, and we'll make it go to the next level, as they say, with uh, with our show uh, next year. And we're excited. We're we're excited for the break. Uh, Thirty five <laughs> weeks is a long time, and I know, like Sherwin uh, Sherwin Hughes uh, does thirty, you know, does five days a week, three hours a day. Uh, type of thing, but this is new for us, and we focus. I spoke focus many hours a week on getting content to fill an hour show, so it's informative, and we're not just sitting here for an hour going, "Please call in, please call in." There's some shows like that. Our show, we want it to be informational based. So, uh, for the last time, um, the executive sponsor that's made 
this show possible along with all the others. Nassala Kombucha is the executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden and Radio Show. Nassala is made Wisconsin with local tea and natural herbs. Look for it in the refrigerator aisle at your local grocer. If you don't see it, ask for it because if it's not Nassala Kombucha, it's not kombucha. Find out more at nassala.com. So until next year, uh, be safe. If you see something, say something. Be safe out there. And it's not goodbye. It's we will see you next March for... Holly Baird. I'm Joy Baird. Take care and thank you for season one. We'll see you next year.